We are all connected through the global ocean. Across the planet, 11 billion tonnes of goods are transported by ship every year. That's up to 90% of all traded goods worldwide that are transported across the seas. Often ignored, the entire global economy depends on shipping. From place to place, things get moved, ships enter ports and exit ports with our everyday objects and desires. But our planet hasn't always been this connected, and not in every way. From the poles to the tropics, biodiverse ecosystems that once were isolated one from another are now connected through our shipping network spanning across the planet. Marine organisms can hitch a ride, often unseen, and then spread and proliferate, overtaking native species and at times modifying or destroying an ecosystem. This can have dramatic consequences, not only for the marine environment, but also for us. A group of scientists from all parts of the Pacific is arriving to Morea, French Polynesia, to participate in a marine biosecurity workshop. We're here for a very important mission. We have a three-day workshop organised by uh, Blue Cradle and the Cawthorne Institute and CREOB to discuss marine biosecurity challenges for the French Polynesia region. Our role is to facilitate research and to bring about collaboration between research institutions. The international exchanges are unusual, particularly in the marine biosecurity space, but I think they're incredibly important because, um, as a lot of us know, the ocean doesn't understand these arbitrary borders that we put in place and it's all very connected. As a large ocean state, located at the heart of the South Pacific, French Polynesia is comprised of five archipelagos, 118 islands with diverse ecosystems, including fragile coral reefs. For over 50 years, the CREOB has been undertaking vital research to understand island ecosystems monitoring, to develop sustainable management strategies. As they discover its facilities, the group of scientists have an opportunity to observe how French Polynesia is particularly vulnerable to potential invasions of marine invasive species. As any island nation, it is really strongly connected by shipping with the rest of the world. French Polynesia is a critical gateway for vessels coming into this region. On est nous en quasiment Haïti, bon, 5 millions de, de kilomètres carrés de ZEE en, en plein milieu du Pacifique entre Australie, Nouvelle-Zélande, Amérique, Amérique du Sud, Amérique du Nord. Quand on voit les cartes de, de trafic maritime, on se dit mais Quels sont les échanges qui peuvent exister et qui sont contaminants Ça, c'est assez interpellant. This is the problem that we have more opportunities for the introduction of a species or for the transport of a species across regions. Clear, clearly, the, 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 the main door for the entrance of marine invasive species are cargo, cruise ship, sailors, and also aquaculture and potential aquaculture transfer. Comment s'assurer qu'un touriste ne ramènera pas une maladie importune ici en Polynésie Bon, chaque semaine, nous accueillons des croisiéristes venus des quatre coins du monde. Regarde ça. Wow. Ce serait des natifs, ça Et Ça a l'air. Parce que c'est pas si. Ah non, celle-ci est complètement allongée. En 2011, nous avons trouvé un oyster ici qui a une très régulière. Nous avons testé them du DNA. Et le DNA ne se trompe pas. Ils sont en fait une secostrée cuculata et c'est natif à la Sud-Afrique. Trouver les them ici a été une surprise pour nous. The species is there. This is a fact. And uh, we, we check it again. 
couple days ago and uh, it's still there and apparently they are increasing a little bit. We also conducted an interesting baseline survey of the marine pests found in the port of Papete, the marina of Papete, another marina around the coastlines there and some control sites. And we uncovered about 50 new invasive pests that are not from Pacific origin. So essentially, we realized that there's a lot of invaders already here, uh, but we have very little baseline survey of actually uh, the natural populations here and how fast these new invaders uh, come in. And if we now introduce organisms to these native ecosystems that actually come from totally different areas of the world, you can disrupt these um, ecological um, structures and relationships and that can have big effects on ecosystem functioning. Marine invasive species can modify an ecosystem and potentially uh, have drastic consequences on the food systems that we rely on, so for fisheries for example, but also for the health of coral reefs on which we depend for our livelihoods, for tourism and aquaculture and things like that. La moindre introduction d'une bestiole quelconque, que ce soit sur des produits de la terre ou sur des produits de la mer, met en péril notre développement, nos productions et naturellement notre économie derrière. Le risque, c'est la probabilité d'apparition d'un danger et son impact. Et son impact ici en biologie marine, enfin en biosécurité marine, ça serait l'impact sur la filière la plus importante en Polynésie, c'est-à-dire les nacres perlières. Il faut savoir que la Polynésie française est la plus grosse productrice de, de perles noires du monde. 90% des perles noires sont produites ici en Polynésie puisque nous avons la chance d'avoir dans nos eaux cette huître, la margarite d'Itifera, qui produit de la perle noire. En Polynésie, vous avez 27 lagons qui produisent des perles. Ici à Tahiti, produire une perle, il faut un lagon, et un lagon qui soit riche en phytoplancton. Donc la qualité d'une perle va dépendre de la qualité du lagon. À partir du moment où tu as une espèce qui va consommer ce phytoplancton, donc ça va venir réduire celle de nos huîtres. Donc voilà, c'est aussi simple que ça. Si on arrive à avoir des éponges ou des acidies ou des anémones de mer qui envahissent toutes les filières de nacre, eh ben forcément, oui, il va y avoir un, un, un réel impact économique sur la filière de la perliculture. Consequences on the economy of French Polynesia also concern tourism, or fishing for example. A good ecosystem status is the basis of other resources like fisheries. The fish need something to eat. If one or several of the species that are now here are replaced by other species that perhaps the fish don't like so much, so there will be a problem for sustainable fisheries. What's more, the impact of marine invasive species is already very visible for those who know the ocean well. We are every day in the water, we see the difference every day. We see that there is a problem and uh, I think it's really important to have someone to say it. We have a problem with this for the temperature or we have an uh, invasion of crown of stone or maybe too much algae in this area. Uh, but for now, we don't do it. We don't do it. We see the difference, but uh, when we're talking with friends, we can talking about this. But we have no uh, paper to fill and to say, okay, uh, this is a, there is a difference. It will be good if you are more monitoring, yes, for sure. It is clear that solutions are needed in French Polynesia to avoid, detect and mitigate this threat. We are back at the workshop, where collective intelligence and knowledge sharing might help French Polynesia find solutions particularly by taking away from the experience of its Pacific counterparts in this field, and especially New Zealand. We were talking about marine biosecurity and trying to come up with practical solutions across the tropical and South Pacific. I think that in terms of marine biosecurity, New Zealand is very much advanced. The New Zealand biosecurity system could potentially serve as a model for the South Pacific and French Polynesia. En Nouvelle-Zélande, ils ont déjà en fait un programme de biosécurité marine euh, établi euh, qui est euh, efficace. Ils ont aussi développé des outils euh, avec l'ADN environnemental euh, très performants. Ils ont testé beaucoup de choses en fait, donc on a tout à apprendre de la Nouvelle-Zélande.
Among other solutions, environmental DNA has proved to be a crucial item within the marine biosecurity toolbox. It is a very powerful technique that allows you to detect uh, species from literally single molecule of DNA that any organism leaves behind. So we now have these tools that are able to capture this diversity very effectively and depict automatically and very rapidly a very holistic view of the entire ecosystem. So these are really, really precious tools that enable us very rapidly to automatically detect a marine pest when they arrive. We have been working on a database for a decade now, which contains all of the diversity of non-indigenous marine pests. But in the long term, it is about sharing the same data across Pacific nations. I think that is more than time to go beyond our borders. And we absolutely need to share these resources, being able to understand the tools we use, standardize this approach so that we compare apples with apples in Fiji, in French Polynesia, in um, New Zealand and beyond. Just like with environmental DNA, regional cooperation is what will truly unlock the power of such approaches to combat unwanted organisms. From my perspective, I think we have something really strong. We have a good group. And I would like to see that uh, continue in the future and I hope we can uh, help the people that need it the most because I feel that this is an issue that can affect people. One of our hopes at the Blue Cradle Foundation is that we can build on these workshops and then start discussing joint proposals for research, monitoring and also citizen science and outreach for this topic which is of national and international significance for the health of the ecosystems but also for societal and economic reasons. L'océan, nous le partageons tous. Il n'y a pas de barrière entre un, pays, entre un pays et un autre. On est obligé de prendre des décisions communes pour qu'elles soient efficaces. Although we are quite like distant on the map, in fact we are neighbors. There's a lot of uh, places in the region that I know of that would really uh, benefit from such a consortium, such a group of collaborators working together. We need to collaborate across countries. The sooner, the better. Et donc c'est bien ce qu'on fait tous ensemble pour essayer de coordonner les efforts au niveau du Pacifique. Building on the first workshop, researchers gathered again, also inviting new stakeholders to advance discussions. This was a unique opportunity to highlight the cultural and geographical connectedness of the Pacific and the importance of indigenous knowledge. Um, we're probably the worst invasive species ourselves. So um, one of the things that we believe, everything we do will make a difference. And all the little things we do, the combination of that should make a difference for our future generations. So it's great to have you in our whare, great to have you on our whenua, talking about um, protection of the moana, just for here, but for other parts of the world where you come from. A lot of the work I do in New Zealand is on, on how we can use Indigenous knowledge and how it fits in alongside science. And so there could be approaches to biosecurity that we can learn from them. The responsibilities we have isn't just for now, it's all about being a good ancestor. Happy scientists going on a, on a tour. <laughs> And one of my functions is the biosecurity, so I have oversight of the compliance with biosecurity. My hopes are that we um, can strengthen that collaboration to improve Pacific biosecurity so that the blue economy can be protected. Today what I was hoping we would do as a group is maybe to think together on how we could build a research program that would connect this marine biosecurity capability beyond New Zealand, joining our different nations. So I'm hoping actually after this workshop uh, we will meet up again uh, in, in the region, in the Pacific region with our member states, uh, with uh, our subject matter experts from the region, building on this scientific knowledge uh, that uh, this group have and correlating with the traditional knowledge uh, that we have in the region to protect the vulnerable uh, biodiversity in the Pacific Ocean states. The group is now determined to move forward with tangible next steps, bringing scientific research together with regional coordination and policy action.
il nous faut comprendre que la recherche ne peut que nous aider à protéger nos richesses et à nous protéger nous-mêmes à terme. Moi, je pense que c'est un problème où le monde n'écoute plus la nature. À un moment donné, il faut passer à l'action. On le voit ici en Polynésie française, le modernisme, la modernité, ce qu'elle a apporté chez nous, c'est malgré tout une mise en péril de ce que nous avions d'essentiel, nos ressources, la terre et la mer. We've completely entered the Anthropocene and we, we've modified the planet to the point of our ecosystems are nearing collapse in a lot of areas around the world. I don't know whether we can stop it because the world has, um, you know, a lot of economic and geopolitical interests and often they unfortunately outweigh conservation interests. But I think it's important and really worthwhile to try and do as much as we can. We need to really be on top of these issues uh, in order to have a safe, healthy and habitable planet uh, for many centuries to come and for future generations. Marine biosecurity is a major issue that will only get exacerbated by climate change and ocean warming. We are at a crossroads. Either we come together and heal our relationship with nature and the ocean, or we suffer the consequences. It's up to us.